start off with running in place. Just keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. shuffle to one side, jab cross, and then the other side. Knees that's recording. Keep your standing knee bent. Other side. ladder steps. Kicks, front side back. Make sure you take turn your standing foot on the side kick. Okay. Two times more through that set. Running in place, punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Shuffle side to side with jab, cross, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. Two times more through, and then when you come back to me, we'll stretch. You reach up. And straight out to the front. for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Both heels on the floor. If you need more stretch, take this elbow, push the knee further out. Turn. Make sure your foot is extended past your knee. Stretch your hip flexor, which is this. Straighten out your legs. Point your toes in the same direction. Knee straight, chin up, back flat. Stretch your hamstring. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch.
turn, start your hip flexor. Straighten up your legs. Stretch your hamstring. <coughs> Have a seat, feet out, reach over to one side, grab your toes, reach over the top, keep your butt on the floor. Other side. And down to the center. Keep your toes up, keep your chin up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth. If you need a little bit more, put your elbows inside your knees, push them out. And then put your hands down and straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do three ex three different exercises. You're I'm gonna show you each one one time through, and then after you've done them with me once through, you're gonna do them two more times. So the first one is legs here, feet are apart, toes are out at 45 degrees. Squat down. Keep your body where it is. Lift your heels up as high as they'll come, heels down and back up. Okay, that's the first one. Second one is dips. So you're gonna start here. If you can put your hands flat on the floor, um, your fingers should be facing your toes. Your elbows need to be straight. So I gotta get my hands off the floor because my elbows don't go straight. So what you can do is you're gonna dip. I'm bending my elbows. I'm not just dropping my butt, I bend my elbows, I kick, bend, kick. And then the last one that we're going to do, on your back, hands, make a diamond under your tailbone. Keep your chin tucked, so don't put your head on the floor behind you, and you're doing scissors. Okay, so two more times through each one of those. Squats, toes, dips with kicks, and scissors. Okay, it's the first month of the new cycle. 
and we're going to go back to some basics, stuff that's in the curriculum this cycle, but not the forms and the self-defenses themselves yet, but the basics that make them up. So we're going to start with some kicks. We're going to start with the side kick. I want you to get your chair. I know you're going, I, I can do this without a chair. I know that, but if you have the chair, then you're focusing on the details rather than on the balance. So right now I want you to put your chair there. Take your standing foot, turn your, I'm going to turn this up so maybe you can see my standing foot. Maybe not. I'm not sure how much space I have here. But you're going to turn your standing foot away from the target. So my target's there, standing foot's turned that way. I'm going to bring my foot up as if I'm putting it on a step in front of me. I'm going to turn my hip and butt towards the target, my heels towards the target, and my toes are pointed down. They're not pointed up, they're pointed down. And I push in and down. So we're going to do five on that leg. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to switch sides. Make sure the standing foot is facing away from the target. Target's there. Knee is up. Turn. So my heel, my knee, my hip are about the same height. My, I'm leaving with my heel, my toes pointed down. I kick out, so I'm pushing and hitting the target with my heel. The rest of my foot is pulled back and out of the way. So let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then what I want you to do is put a target there. Okay, so you can use your chair as your target. I'm just gonna make the back of the chair my target. And I wanna hit it only with the bottom of my heel. So I'm gonna go one. I'm not gonna hit hard enough to make anything go flying across the kitchen. Two, three, four, five and then five on the other side i'll use the stove for the target for that one two three four five okay then you're going to get to pull your chair back out and we're going to do hook kicks the hook kick most of the kicks that we do, we say four-point kicks. You have chamber, kick, re-chamber, leg. So if I'm doing a round husking, I'm doing a four-point kick. Chamber, kick, re-chamber, land. When I do a side kick, it's kind of got five points. I have the chamber, turn my hip, which is the second part of the chamber, kick, re-chamber, land. So that's five parts. One, two, three, four, five. When I do a hook kick, in Tungstado, we call it yep. Hurryo Chaki. So if we actually spoke Korean, we probably wouldn't pronounce it like that. But it means side hook kick. So what you're actually doing is you throw on me side kick. You miss with the side kick. So I'm throwing me side kick. I'm trying to hit something with this part of my foot. But it's back here, so I missed. And then I drag my hip back and I hit it with the back of my heel. So this kick actually has five parts. This is not the hook. That's a rechamber. The hook comes from your hip. So I'm going to chamber, just like I did with my side kick, turn my hip, my heel towards the target, my knee's going to be up the same height, throw the side kick, hook, pull it in, and drop it. So we're going to do five of those. One, two, three, four, And then on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then I want you to find somebody that you can practice with. 
that will help you practice. And they're going to offer you targets. So they're going to hold their hand out like this, and you're going to throw side kicks and hit with the bottom of your heel. You're going to do 10 on each foot. They're going to move the heights around and move their hand around. So you have to move around a little bit. You might have to move here and then back up and kick higher and come forward and kick center. And from the same place, kick lower and kick higher, but 10 on each leg. And then I want you to do 10 hook kicks on each leg. And when they hold for the hook kicks, they're going to put one hand here and one like this. And you're going to aim your side kick for their hand. But it's going to be too far away and you're going to miss. And you're going to drag your heel. So you're going to miss this one and drag your heel back and kick the other one. So I want 10 of those on each leg too. And then it's a courtesy to also do it for your partner. If they don't take karate, that's okay. Go over the kicks with them because the best way for you to learn them is to teach them to someone else. Okay, so you guys have three forms that you're gonna be responsible for this cycle. Um, and what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna pull some techniques out of each of those forms and we're gonna practice the techniques. Because no matter if you can get from the beginning to the end of the form, pointing in the right direction, if the techniques are not proper, if they're not done correctly with all of the things that we've been getting our stripes and stars for the last few months, focus, intensity, um, black belt excellence, power, pointing in the right direction, hitting the right target, accuracy, then there's no point in doing them. Okay, so we're gonna start off with back leg roundhouse kicks. So a lot of you guys were dragons, and if you weren't, I want you to think back as if you were dragging. You're gonna fall back in your bar stance. You're gonna turn your standing foot. So I want you to say, turn the foot. You're gonna chamber like a front kick turn to a roundhouse kick chamber. And see my foot? When I turn to the roundhouse kick chamber, I'm turning my toes in that direction. Roundhouse kick. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Then I'm going to go back in the other direction. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Turn the foot. Roundhouse kick. Okay, then I want you to get someone to hold a target for you. So when they hold targets, if, even if they don't have something to hold, you can kick their hand, they're gonna turn their hand. So you're gonna kick one side of the hand, other side of the hand. One side of the hand, <clears throat> I'm gonna crash. Other side of the hand, at least 10 times. Then we're gonna do a slide up side kick. <clears throat> okay, so we practiced side kicks in the, in the, the last part of the video. And you know when you do a side kick, your standing toes have to be facing away from the target. The slide up gives you the opportunity to do that. So what I do is as I slide up, I drag those toes up and they turn away from my, so if my target was there, I'm actually gonna go that way towards you, but if my target was there, when I slide up, I'm turning my toes away from the target as I slide up. So I'm gonna do slide up, side kick, slide up, side kick. Slide up, side kick. And then I go back and do it with the other leg. Slide up, side kick. Slide up, side kick. Slide up, side kick. Then I want you to put those together. So I'm going to start here in my, back, in my guard stance. I'm going to turn the foot, roundhouse kick. Slide up, side kick. Turn the foot, roundhouse kick. Slide up side kick and I'm going to go back and do it again turn the foot roundhouse kick slide up sorry that was another roundhouse kick it should have been a side kick turn the foot roundhouse kick slide up side kick okay so I want you to do at least 10 sets of those I just did four turn off the video if you need to but I want you to do 10 sets then we come back we're going to do a couple more techniques first one that we're going to do is a, crescent, is a reverse crescent kick. Okay, so a reverse crescent kick chambers like a, um, chambers like a, like a front kick, like an axe kick, okay? So it's gonna come up this way. My hip, my knee is gonna come across my body and open. So I want you to do a start, is we're just gonna make those circles. We're gonna do 10 on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. And then I do ten on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then I'm going to do the crescent kick. This is not re this is a reverse crescent kick. So I'm going inside to out. We will be doing a regular crescent kick too in a minute that goes outside to in, but this one comes across and opens. So you're, ideally you're hitting with this outside blade of your foot. So my foot comes up, I cross, I kick, I bring it back, and I, I, I set my foot down. If you just do this, it's become an axe kick. You've got to bring your foot back to your knee. There's your chamber. So let's do five on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And then five on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you're going to stand to your legs as you put your hand out. I'm going to travel forward as I do this. I'm going to do an inside to out crescent kick. And then the other hand, crescent kick, other hand, crescent kick, other hand, crescent kick. Down and back, not 10 times down and back, but at least 10 kicks. Okay, then when you come back to me, you can go back here and you're going to get in a horse stance with your toes straight forward. Okay. If your target was going to be there or there, your toes would be out at 45. But right now, your target is directly in front of you. So your toes have to be, ideally, they're pointed in a little bit and your knees are still out. But a lot of you guys, when you point your toes in, it makes your butt do that, which isn't a good stance. You've got to have your shoulders over your hips. So if you can't toe in, at the very least, put them straight forward. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to chamber. I'm going to block with this hand first. That's why it's on the outside. I'm going to block, punch. Then the one that's out is going to block, punch. I'm going to do 10 sets of that. One, two, three. Okay, power comes from rotation. So I'm not rotating my hips here, but I'm rotating my hands, I'm rotating my shoulders, and I'm rotating my upper body above my hips. So one, two, three, four, five. Get a little bit lower, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is not legit. I see a lot of kids doing that. That might have been okay when you were a tiger. You guys are red belts, chamber, block. Okay, one more. Well, actually, it's, it's one technique, but we're going to make it into two different things. So this is a... Crescent kick, regular crescent kick outside the in. You did this one back, you learned this one when you were a beginner back when you learned action karate form four. So this one, your knee comes up and crosses in, crosses in. The other one we did, it came in and then it opened. This one comes in. So we'll do five in on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the other side, it's a front kick chamber up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're going to travel. It doesn't come up here. I turn my hips, it comes up here, and then the rotation I get for the power is as my hips turn to here as I throw the kick. So one, two, three, four. Okay, if I do more, then I'm going to crash into the camera, but do a couple more. Okay, and while you're doing those, I'll tell you where this is going to go. This is going to become a hurricane kick. A hurricane kick is a jump, spin, or a pump, spin, spin, pump, outside in person kick. So what I'm going to do to start, I'm going to start here. I'm going to pick this knee up. So this knee is going to come up. And that one's going to kick. So from this angle, this left knee comes up, kick with the right one. Right one comes up, kick with the left. Pump, kick, pump, kick. Okay, then we're going to add a spin to this. 
So I'm going to start here. My target's on that side of me. I'm going to read this way so you can follow along with me. I'm going to spin. And look at my feet. When I spin, I never want my feet here. If I bring my feet here, I'm off balance. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to spin so my feet are beside each other. I'm going to drag this one, chamber with it, kick, spin, drag, chamber, kick, spin, drag, chamber, kick, spin, drag, chamber, kick. Okay, I want you to do 10 of those all together. Okay, this cycle, beginners and intermediate are doing chunks. For a lot of people, this is their favorite weapon. I think it's the coolest weapon. Um, it's got some practical application, but you can't carry them around, unlike a stick. I mean, we do it in a sword form, and you can't carry a sword around, but you can carry a stick around, and a lot of the, the uh, techniques are interchangeable. But we're gonna start here. If you hold your chucks down here, I guarantee you at some point you're gonna smack yourself in the face. You gotta hold them way up here. Okay, and if you're taking class from me, you're gonna hear me going a lot of time. Hands closer to the string. Hands closer to the strings. Anytime you switch hands, you're gonna slide down. And once your hands are down here, you're gonna smack yourself in the head. So I want you to put them, you're just gonna put it in your right hands now. Okay, so if it was up and down like this, my thumb is gonna be at the bottom, so it's here. I'm gonna hold it next to me, and I'm just gonna do backward spins. So if you're standing here like this next to me, it's backward spins. Then I'm gonna put it in the other hand and do the same thing, backward spins. So it's going backwards, backwards, backwards. But it's not my whole shoulder in this, it's just coming, my shoulder and my elbow are pretty steady. The motion is just coming from my wrist. So I'm going back, and the same thing with the other hand. Back. Okay, then I'm gonna put it back in the right hand, thumb right close to the string, and I'm gonna go forward. So it's going forward, 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 forward. And just like we did before, the motion is really just coming from my wrist. Then I'm gonna put it in the other hand and do the same thing. Okay, then you're gonna do it with both. So get your other chuck. If you're a beginner, if you're a white belt or a beginner and you only have one, that's okay. Just keep doing the one hand. The rest of you guys get your other hand and you're gonna spin them both back. What you're gonna find is my, I'm very right-handed. So my right hand does this really well by itself. I'm very stupid on the left side. My left hand does not do this well at all on its own. When I do them together, the left one does better because it's just following along. Better than when I just have one out there by itself. So you go backwards with two, and then you're going forwards with two. Okay, then put one down again. Now you're going to bring it up to your shoulder. I'm not doing any spins here. I got my feet spread a little bit, so I'm hitting here. I'm not smacking myself in the leg, I'm just using it as a place to turn so it doesn't hurt. I'm just going down and up. Down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my other hand and put it in the left hand. Down and up. This side, like for me, I, this side is really stupid. Okay, then I'm gonna change it up a little bit, make it harder. I'm gonna bring it here and I'm just gonna go down and up so my, I can stop here. So you don't need to have something to hit it on, to turn it, it can hit on your leg, it can hit on the bottom part of your arm. It can just turn in the air. It's just that if you hit something, it's going a little bit faster because it's bouncing off. So I'm bouncing off on the right. In the air on the right, and leg on the right. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the left. Off your arm. In the air and off your leg. Okay, then get your other one. Like I said, make sure you're holding them close to the strings. You're gonna start here. Legs, I mean arms. Then just in the air. and off your legs.
Okay, and if you're wondering about the catch at the end, I just came from here, brought it forward and caught. Sometimes it's easier to add an extra turn before you catch. If you come here and you reach, you're not gonna catch. All I do is open my hand and let it fall in. So I'm here, I can do it without the extra spin, but the extra spin gives you enough momentum to make it easy. So I just bring it, spin, catch. It's the same spin that we did down here. I'm just doing it off my shoulder. Here, forward, catch. Here, forward, open my hand, let it fall in. Forward, open my hand and let it fall in. If your strings are really long, you're gonna find when you catch, that instead of catching your chucks like this, you're gonna be way up here and you're gonna be catching string. Ideally, you wanna set like this with really short strings or really short chains. If you have long chains, I can't help you. If you have long strings, talk to me and I can possibly, depending on what kind of chucks you have, help you figure out how to make your strings shorter. They're much easier to work with. Okay, advanced class and black belt, you guys are doing sword. If you're a black belt, you can use a metal sword. Uh, if you are a gup, you have to use a wooden sword. A wooden sword is called a boken. Um, you can do huge damage to somebody with a boken. Think about hitting somebody with a hard stick, okay? You can't cut them, but it's still a useful weapon. Your, your boken should be a little bit longer than this. This one it was Seth's when he was about seven or eight, and it's a good one to use in the house because there's less length to hit the ceiling fan or the string hanging off it. Okay, so we're going to start with some basics. I don't have a scabbard on this one, but if you had a scabbard, you would always put it in your sword into your scabbard with the business side up. Reason for that is this is the sharp edge. So if you, when you put it into your scabbard, the weight of the sword is on this edge. Okay, so if you turn it this way, so the sharp side is down. Now, while it's riding around in your scabbard, while you're running across the battlefield or riding your horse across the battlefield, it's the weight is dulling this edge. So it's always in your scabbard or in your belt, business side up. Okay, so it's here. I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do this right hand. I'll show it to you in the other direction too, but I want you to be able to see what my hand is doing. Okay, when I draw it, I'm not gonna put my hand this way. I'm gonna bring it like this, so that my thumb is underneath and my fingers are on top. So when I draw, the business end leads. So the business end, the sharp end is leading, and I cut across. Because if I grab the other way, I have a sharp end up and I grab here, when I pull it out across, I'm hitting with a dull edge. That's not what I want to do. I want to be able to pull it right out and, and attack. So it's here in my belt, sharp side up, thumb is down, the four fingers are on top, and you pull it out and across. Okay, when you put it back, you do not want to put a, a sword covered with blood and bone chips and guts back in your scabbard. It's just going to rot in there. So after you cut, you bring it up. You, so you clear it out of whatever you cut. You flick to wipe the most of the blood off. Then you take your hand and you put it against your hip like this. So the thumb is against your body, the four fingers are out, and this is here. You put the not sharp side of the sword. If you put the sharp side, you're gonna cut right through your hand. Okay, so you put your hand here, you put the sword here, you squeeze, you wipe the blood off. And then you tuck it back into the scabbard, sharp side up, okay? This is gonna seem really silly, but it's a good memory pack. So I start here, I attack, here, and then I bring it up, ha, I beat you. Okay, we're gonna wipe, swish, uh, flick off the blood, swish. I'm gonna wipe the blood. And I'm gonna put it back in my belt, click. Okay, good memory peg. Here, ha, swish, click. Here, ha, swish, click. I want you to do that 10 times. Okay, if you have a burning desire to do it on the left side, if you're left-handed, go ahead. Uh, the forms are right-handed, so you're gonna have to be able to do it on the right hand anyway. Okay, then we're gonna talk about blocking and striking. Okay, when I block, I say block the head, a lot of you guys do this. This is not a useful block for your head. Your head is not blocked, okay? If you block like this, with the tuba down, 
That's what this thing is called. I don't know. It's spelled T-S-U-B-A. It's a suba. It's the guard. Okay, so if I block like this with the guard down and the other person's sword or axe or tire iron hits here and slides down, there's a good chance it's going to come right over the top and take my hand. So I want to block this way. So I'm going to start here just in this regular stance, bring my sword up and block and bring it back down and up and block. So we do that 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to cut. So I bring my sword up and I'm going to block and then I'm going to cut across shoulder to hip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'll do it the other way in case it's easier for you to follow. Block and cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I want you to practice those and then I want you to add a step. So I'm going to start here with my sword on, in the scabbard. I'm going to step out and cut and block and step and strike. And then ha, swish, click. And then again, start here. Step out, cut across. Block, step and cut. Ha, swish, click. Okay, I want you to do that 10 times. 